to be a guinea pig so we can demonstrate the effectiveness of this work. Then we will have a, a clinical practical session where you guys will learn one or two of these uh, techniques. And then we'll all hopefully roll around on the floor and see the uh, functional movement aspect of this work. And please, if you have any questions at any point during the lecture at any time, don't hesitate to ask. So let's <coughs> go back to Dr. Andrew Taylor Still, born in 1828 and passed away in 1917. He is the founder of the osteopathic profession. He also was an MD, and um, he had some difficulties with that modality back in the day. Both his children died of uh, meningitis, and somewhere it wasn't working for him. So we thought there must be some better way of um, accessing health and healing in the system. This man was a real pioneer and developed the osteopathic uh, concepts, te techniques, and principles. And now osteopathy is all over the world, and um, mainly in the English-speaking countries, the UK, Australia, of course the United States, um, and also now in uh, Central Europe, there's a big wave of osteopathic teaching going on in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Italy. And uh, let's see what's going to be the future for India in, in this field. So, Tom Hanna um, is the founder of Hanna Somatics, and in my view, um, Hanna Somatics and osteopathy is, uh, are very, very close in terms of the principles, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So Tom uh, was a philosopher, and um, he developed this clinical somatic education, also known as Hanna Somatic Education. And he spent his life searching for ways for human beings to become free physically and intellectually. He wanted, others, he wanted to encourage others to realize the power they have to take responsibility for their own lives. And this is the one of the main tenets with um, somatics. Somatics is all about the first person experience and how we can be self-healing, self-responsible and self-correcting. And how can we access those principles through uh, the clinical work and through the movement classes. Now, this um, photograph was taken with Tom here and uh, Moshe Feldenkrais. Has anybody heard of Moshe Feldenkrais? Anybody at all? Nobody. Okay, that's fine. So Moshe Feldenkrais was an Israeli scientist and he developed the um, functional integration Feldenkrais method. And Tom Hanna um, brought him to the United States in the 70s to conduct the first professional training in San Francisco and he directed and invited Moshe to come along and then Tom uh, went ahead and developed his anisomatics but as I said as far as I can see um, being somewhat of an expert in both fields there's not much difference in terms of the principle between anisomatics and osteopathy except the somatic view were very much into the first person experience and the effect of that in terms of health and healing. Uh, really, it should be very compatible with this culture because it's very much to do with awareness, and you have a big um, aspect of yoga, and at the end of the day, yoga really is about self-awareness. So what is the function of awareness in terms of embodied awareness, in terms of health and healing? And that's what these two guys were about. And what they uh, specifically were about in modern um, uh, physiology is homeostasis, and you're all aware of that. Osteopathy, homeopathy, and anisomatics all have the same basic tenet, being the body's natural ability to self-correct, heal, and maintain the body in a state of health. So we're all here, sitting here alive and healthy, and the system is working all the time to maintain that health. So the big question is, really, how does that work in a holistic way? How can we apply the, uh, the uh, healing aspect of homeostasis in terms of orthopedics, in terms of manual medicine, in terms of pain management? How can we really come in contact to what that is in a very real way and have very real benefits? 
So this is the um, journey and discovery of um, osteopathy and ancillaries. So let's talk about um, the definitions here. So soma, well, from normal anatomy, when we think of soma, we think of the body. But um, Tom Hanna brought that, um, he redef redefined the word. And he redefined the word as the living body experience from within. A soma is self-aware, self-sensing, self-regulating, and self-responsible, I, here, and now. So from now on, when I use the word soma, we think of the mind, body, spirit as one functional unit. That's what I believe the soma to be, and that's how I use that word. So somatic, somatics refers to the first, our first person experience of our soma. So somatics related to the soma and its proprioceptive senses. Where I am in space, how I feel right now. Uh, the first person experience. So that is somatics and soma. So let's have a look at now of the application of these, this idea of soma and somatics in terms of panasomatics. What is it exactly? A method for educating yours or another's sensory motor system to recover innate abilities for greater voluntary neuromuscular self-control it restores both sensory accuracy and motor control of habituated, i.e. unconscious and involuntary neuromuscular function, functions. Helps release painful, limiting, chronic neuromuscular contraction patterns. Aims to improve function because function maintains structure. Function maintains structure. So when I was back in osteopathic school, we were very, this, was, this tenant was all over the place. Structure and function very much interrelated. <clears throat> but we went off on the uh, structural um, education and not on a functional <coughs> part of it because that was the way it was taught back then. There's a new revival on the functional aspect uh, of um, osteopathy and how structure indeed follows function. So let's think about that for a moment, structure and function. We have this hall here. This hall is a beautiful big room and here we are in the space. It has a certain structure. And there is a function of a meeting place for all of us to be here. But the guy who designed this hall designed the structure around this function where we all come to meet. In the same way, our human soma and all living somas was developed structurally around certain functions. And in the case of what we're talking about, movement functions. So if we can improve the function of our nervous system, and if we can improve the function of our movements, then we're going to have structural changes. And that's what this work is all about, getting on the inside of regulating the nervous system so it's giving the right impulses to the, nerve, to the muscles and joints so that the structuring changes because the function has improved. And that's the key. And to get on the inside of that, you have to go into your first person proprioceptive somatic experience. Does, does that make sense, that structure function relationship? Yeah? <coughs> so, <coughs> as you know, muscles don't move on their own. What moves muscles? That's a question for you guys. Anybody can answer. <laughs> what moves muscles? Oh, I'm getting you engaging you here in this. Anybody? Any brave taker tell me what moves muscles? Somebody. <laughs> I can't hear you. Please answer. Me. What is it? Nerves. Exactly. Well done. <laughs> you were very brave. <laughs> Nerves move, muscles do not move on their own. So, if we can regulate the nervous system to work correctly, then the muscles are going to function in a much better way. So we're very interested in the neurophysiology of how think that can uh, act in homeostasis in terms of pain management. And it's all to do with regulating the nervous system. So we talked a little bit about this um, structure and function, 
function maintain structure. Function in this case means self use. Alters and maintain structure for weight bearing and movement stress. And also we're very interested in the somatic center. Now what we define the somatic center is the area between the rib cage, pelvis, front, back and sides. And if there is a dysfunction in the somatic center, then there most likely will be a dysfunction in the periphery. So if you've got low back pain, if you've got low back pain, um, that can cause problems in the hips or the knees or in the shoulder or in the neck. So you always, when you're assessing a, a patient, you always want to look at their somatic center and where, if there's a problem there, how it's affecting the periphery. And indeed, if your patient has a shoulder problem or a neck problem or a knee problem, you want to go to the somatic center to see what's going there, going on there, and see how that's affecting the periphery. So in, in our eyes, the somatic center is very, very important, being able to assess that in terms of dysfunction and how it relates to the rest of our soma. Very, very important. Okay. Sensory motor amnesia. Now here's a so-called very fit American football player. But you see he's got some limitations in movement. He can't straighten his legs there. He can't bend over. He's got a very tight back. He's got very tight hamstrings. So this is a, a classic case of sensory motor amnesia. So what is sensory motor amnesia? Sensory motor amnesia is a habitual state of forgetfulness of